Namaste. My name is Yamini. Welcome to Lavi Satvik. And today I'm going to do a very special video, which is your first ever yoga class. Now, maybe you have already done a yoga class before or you are a complete beginner. Thank you for choosing this video and giving yoga a chance. Before we get started, let's first get into a comfortable seated position so you can listen comfortably to what I have to say for a few minutes before we start the class. Now, since it's your first yoga class or maybe you're a beginner, maybe you're not very comfortable to sit down on the floor on your mat. I would then recommend you to take a pillow, very easy, or two pillows and you can place it under your hip. So if you felt like your legs were up here, find something elevated to sit down on so your knees can go down. Okay, so that you're not very uncomfortable like this. Alternatively, you can put your, your mat towards the wall and maybe lean against the wall. Or if you find it's really difficult, you can maybe stretch out your legs or even sit in any other position like this one, whichever is comfortable to you. Okay, now that we have got set on the mat and you're in a comfortable seated position, let's begin. So what stops people from doing yoga? I don't know if this is your case, but what I've observed is that a lot of people are afraid to go for their first class of yoga or they are not afraid but they have certain bias against yoga. So generally people tell me yoga is not for me because I'm not flexible, I'm too old, I find it boring, I think it's only for women. So the list is endless on why people do not try yoga. I want to break this bias and tell you if you have a body and a mind and you are breathing, yoga is for you. Yoga is for everyone, any type of body, any age group, any physical situation with our body, any handicap. Yoga is beneficial for every, everyone. Yoga is a practice that is not an exercise. It is not for flexibility. It's a much deeper practice. And in the end, yoga is for you to understand yourself better. Go inside of yourself, train your mind and find peace and calm in your life, despite life's ups and downs. So before we start, let's talk about what are the few things you should do before yoga practice. Okay. One really important thing is to train your mind and set up a regular practice. You have already showed up for this video. So well done and just block it in your calendar whenever you have time, whether it's 15 minutes, 20 minutes or one hour, just block this time, preferably in the morning. Make sure that you're awake. You have not eaten food before your yoga practice. So try to have an empty stomach for at least two hours. And that's why morning practice is very good before breakfast. If possible, have a shower, wear comfortable clothes, there is no outfit, no yoga outfit necessary. It is any kind of outfit that you feel comfortable in. Try to prepare your mat, prepare the space around you, keep it clean, have light, have some nice smells so that you feel comfortable already in the space you have created for yoga. Okay, from there, we start our practice. We always start our practice by first centering ourselves. So we have a lot of things happening in our day, in our mind. It's also your first class or you're a beginner. So you're wondering what we're going to do in this class. And that's why let's forget about all this and center ourselves. 
So starting with our eyes closed, trying to feel the lower body grounded with the mat. We use this feeling to really connect us with the earth. Again, if you're not feeling comfortable seated, try to find a position that is comfortable for you or keep your back against the wall. Once you make your lower body heavy, try to pull your belly towards your spine and slowly bone by bone, try to raise your head up towards the sky, gently rolling the shoulders, letting the palms face the sky, palms are on the knees. And slowly we take this moment to recognize that you have taken this time for yourself today to create a space for your yoga practice, to create a time and to give energy to your yoga practice. Maybe there is some noise around you, maybe there are some smells, maybe you can feel the air on your skin. Try to observe everything that is going around you that speaks to your senses. And now try to go away from all of that inside you, trying to look inside you through your breath. So just focusing on your inhale and exhale. We try again just to observe how it feels today, your inhale and your exhale. Noticing that you're breathing, being grateful that you're alive. Maybe softening the inhale and lengthening the exhale to make it as long as possible. Imagine when you inhale, your entire lungs are full of air. And when you exhale, you release all that air outside of you. Two more rounds, we observe our breath. And from here, we just relax our spine, come back to normal breathing. We rub our palms together, creating some heat. And we place our palms on our eyes. And we join the hands to heart center. Welcome to this yoga class. Now yoga, as we know in the modern world, we all think yoga is an exercise to give us strength and flexibility. Well, strength and flexibility are a consequence of doing yoga or a physical practice of yoga, but they are not the only purpose of yoga. If you want to know what yoga really is all about, you can watch my other video on the same channel. It's called What is Yoga Really About? And here I talk in that video, I talk about the eight limbs of yoga. And that will give you a deeper idea of what, what yoga is about. So in summary, yoga is about firstly setting rules for how you work, how you take care of your body, your principles. It's living peacefully in society. It's working on your breath work. So understanding, recognize your breathing, improving your breath work. Then it is physically preparing your body to give it the strength and flexibility that it needs in order to be able to be seated and focused to concentrate on meditation, which is calming of your mind. So finally, the purpose of yoga is truly to calm your mind and become a more peaceful, content person. And that's why yoga is for every type of body. Let's today start with a very basic yoga practice that you as a beginner can do regularly. And normally it should be okay for anyone, even if you are suffering with some injuries. Okay, 
So we start this practice. Again, we are still seated. So if you need, you can shake out your legs a little bit. Just relax the legs. We will start in this position. So really just straightening the legs out. Belly in. Inhale, we raise both hands up. Already this is a very active position. So you should feel all the way up to your finger, up to your toes. Toes are straightening, legs are engaged, belly is in, hands are raising up. Okay, we hold here every inhale, we try to pull ourselves higher. Every exhale, we relax our shoulders. One more time, inhale, pull the hands up and exhale, relaxing the hands. From here, we release both hands, we join the feet together, grab the feet, Try to pull yourself up, straightening the back, maybe bring the hips closer and we just flap our feet, Okay, trying to bring the knees close to the ground. Now you could be over here, you can be all the way down, look at where you are, just observe your body, observe the hips and just try to move either side to side or up and down. If you are somebody who has a lot of flexibility in your hips, your knees are all the way down, you can try to lean slightly forward, pull the chest up and go further down. If you're somebody who is feeling very tight and you're over here, again try to bring the feet slightly forward with your elbows. You can push weight into your thighs and try to open the feet up to push the thighs a bit lower. You should feel some stretch in your hips few more rounds we go one side at a time or both sides together okay from here we raise the hand uh, head up bring the legs in front bring the hands behind you roll the shoulders back and just take few rounds rotation with your feet so making circles with your toes observing your toes observing your feet observing your ankles if you've had any ankle issue in the past, go slowly and then the other side. Okay, from here we bend the knees, bring the hands either to the front or slightly behind, whichever feels comfortable to you. Roll the shoulders back, slowly shift the hips forward. You can feel a stretch in your shoulders. If this is too much for you, bring the shoulders back. We want to roll the shoulders back, fingers are pointing away, hips are going in front. Looking forward, we hold here for five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly bringing the hands in front, we come back to seated position. Again, you can sit on the pillow from here, we will continue our warm-up, so placing the hands on the shoulders. We take three big rounds, bringing the elbows together, elbows to the sides of the ear and all the way back. Round two, big circles, just observing your shoulders, taking nice big circles and then the other way around. Okay, so there are many different types. Of yoga class today we are doing a type of yoga called Hatha yoga where we will hold the postures and also work through the postures with movement okay from here we place both hands down now taking your left hand we place it on the right ear looking straight we just pull the neck a little bit towards the side so you should feel a stretch from the side of the neck all the way up to the shoulders very important to warm up all your joints and muscles before you start your yoga practice. So if you're a beginner and you're going for some classes and you know that you have a weakness or tightness in some part of your body, just make sure you always start the class five minutes earlier and you warm up that part of your body. Okay, going back straight, we place the left hand down, right hand on the left ear and we pull the neck towards this side. 
looking straight and coming back up from here we are going to go into tabletop position so in this position we want the fingers spread so really spread the fingers weight over here make sure the wrists are in line with shoulders and knees are in line with hips push the mat away if you are feeling pain in your knees then you can place again a pillow be below your knees and if it's really too much pain then you can avoid this posture and just come into seated position till we finish this move okay so move, pushing our shoulder um, wrists away from the mat so really pushing with the center of your wrist we warm up the spine so we start to inhale we arch the spine cat and cow and then we exhale we bring chin towards chest we round the spine one more time inhale arch the spine and exhale we round the spine from here again inhale arching the spine stretching all the way from lower spine middle spine upper spine to your neck and then exhale we round the spine looking at our belly button and from here coming back to neutral spine we walk the hands forward till the chest comes down to the mat and head goes down flat on the mat okay make sure that your knees are still in line with your hips and your hands are stretching away from you puppy pose from here slowly we look forward at our fingers and we shift the weight forward to lie down on our chest here we make sure that we're on our elbows elbows in line with shoulders fingers are flat on the mat feet are down glutes are squeezed we raise up the chest rolling the shoulders back to bring the chest forward so be careful not to be here if your legs are very loose and your shoulders are in front you'll be in this posture so push with your hand roll the shoulders back pick yourself up squeeze the lower body sphinx pose staying here for a moment if you feel extreme lower back pain Please come out of this posture and just lie down on the mat. Try to squeeze, squeeze, squeeze lower body to push slightly higher. And then exhale, we bring chest down, chin down, we relax on the hands. Okay. From here, we place the hands to the side of the chest, rolling shoulders back, feet are down, glutes are squeezed. We pick up the chest. Okay. You should not feel too much weight on your wrist elbows can be bent looking forward this is cobra from here we come all the way down onto our heels now if you have enough ankle flexibility you can keep the ankles flat and just sit down on the heels it's normal that in the beginning you might be somewhere here so you don't feel very comfortable keeping your ankles down or you don't have you have limited flexibility and hips don't go all the way down so stay where you are every inhale try to lengthen the spine every exhale try to sit a bit lower and try to stretch out those ankles balasana or child's pose use this pose as relaxation and to bring back your breathing from here we look forward at our fingers we come back into tabletop, we tuck the toes, we push the mat away and we raise the hips up into Adho Mukha Svanasana or Down Dog. Okay, look forward at your fingers. This is the first time you're doing this pose. It might feel a bit strange. So come back on the knees, sit in child's pose. Take a moment. 
then we look forward at our fingers without moving the hands keeping the hands where they are shift the weight forward tuck the toes push the mat away to raise the hips up and then hips go higher 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 eventually maybe the knees straighten legs straighten out and heels go all the way down okay now we look forward at our hands bend the knees look forward come back sit down and just sit down on your hips okay so here it's normal that you feel a pressure in your wrists now in yoga it's very common that people feel lots of pressure in their knees and wrists in the beginning that's because the knees and wrists are not used to these movements also because they are fragile joints so we need to be very careful so let's take a moment to just relax the knees by uh, wrists by rotating the wrists and then open close with the thumb inside okay always be careful of your wrists if you feel too much pain in your wrists always sit down in the yoga class don't hesitate to do that okay but i need to add some of these postures because these are the common postures in yoga again same thing if you feel too much stress in your ankles come up and sit this way there's always a way to adjust your posture yoga is about helping your body not about torturing it okay so learn how to help yourself when the teacher is not able to guide you because sometimes the teacher does not know the level of all the students and as a beginner maybe you need to make some adjustments for yourself based on how you feel okay so from here we're going to try the down dog or adho mukha svanasana once more again sitting down completely in child's pose we look at our fingers so really try to put the weight in the middle of the hand not at the end of the wrist come forward tuck the toes raise the hips up and then push the hips back pushing the hands away as if somebody is pulling your hips up you can keep the knees bent or you can straighten them based on your flexibility of your hamstrings maybe if the heels come all the way flat if not bend the knees look forward back straight again hips go all the way up here you can just bend one knee at a time to relax the hamstrings feeling the blood flowing down to your head and then from here you bend the knees you look forward you bring right leg forward left leg forward knees are bent from the side back straight you raise both hands up and hands come down to the side so here you should feel warmed up now we stand on the top towards the top of the mat for the most important pose in yoga tadasana or mountain pose okay it looks like a very simple posture but it's very important so in the beginning we try to focus on one two and three points of the feet of both feet trying to lift up the toes make sure you're equally distributing your weight on these three points place the toes down try to straighten the legs without tightening the knees too much knees are still soft belly in glutes are engaged but not squeeze too much belly coming towards spine bone by bone we pick up the head head is going up we roll the shoulders up to our ears we let the shoulders come back palms are facing forward looking straight in front of you tadasana or mountain pose remember this pose just observe how your body feels you should feel perfectly aligned perfectly stable and this is how your standing posture should be without bending our spine without pushing the hips forward everything is straight and aligned shoulders are rolled back and we are looking forward from here we place right hand on belly left hand on chest and we focus on pranayama or breath work this is called abdominal pranayama so breathing through the belly we inhale to raise the belly up so bringing the belly out like a balloon and we exhale to remove all the air from the belly one more time inhale 
Fill the belly up with air. Exhale, remove all the air from the belly. Again, inhale. Raising the belly up. And exhale, removing all the air from the belly. One last time, inhale. Completely filling the belly with air and exhale, slowly letting go of all the air. From here, we bring the hands to the side. We raise the hands up behind the head. We interlock the fingers without pushing the head. Try to instead rest the head on your hands. Pull the elbows away from each other. Bending the knees slightly, we bring chest towards thigh. Back straight. Again, don't push your head. Try to just relax the head on the hands. Inhale, pull the elbows back. Raise yourself up. Soften the knees. Push the hips forward. Raise the chest up. Elbows are going away from each other. Exhale. Straighten the back. Bend the knees. Pull the elbows away. Bring the chest towards the thigh. Again, inhale. Raising the head up. Back straight. Knees are bent. Soften the knees. Push the hips in front. Elbows go away from each other. Raising the chest up to the sky. Straighten the back. Look forward. Bend the knees. Chest towards thigh. We hold here. We pull the elbows away from each other. We relax the hands. We release the hands. Holding the elbows with opposite hands. Keeping the chest towards the thighs. Knees are bent. We just move side to side. Our elbows. And from here we grab the thighs. Okay, you can keep bending your knees. If you feel like you have a lot of flexibility, you can start to raise the hips up, straightening the legs, keeping the hands, grabbing the thighs, head comes down. If not, keep the knees bent and look forward at your feet. We hold here in Uttanasana or forward fold for three, two, one. In order to come out, we bend the knees, we sit the hips low, we release the hands, we raise the hands up, back is straight, raising the chest up, looking forward as if you're sitting on a chair. Yes, you can feel the thighs. We hold here for three, two, one and straighten everything out. You should feel some stretch in your complete body. Roll the shoulders back, let the palms face forward, Tadasana. Or mountain pose and take a deep inhale and exhale from here we place hands on the waist we step the right leg behind so that both heels are in line okay and right toes are facing forward left toes are facing this way your hips are facing straight so if you find you're doing this, try to move the hips so that the hips face in the direction of this foot. Okay, this knee is bent. Try to push the knee away. If you're feeling a lot of knee pain, try to straighten the leg. Now once you're here, try to straighten both the hands. Sit a bit lower. Look at your left hand. Veera Badrasana or Warrior 2. Every inhale, we straighten the leg. Every exhale, we bend the leg and we sit a bit lower. Try not to fall the body forward, body straight, hands are straight, looking at the left. Again, straighten the leg and then bend the knee, sit the hip a little bit lower. We hold here for five counts, Virabhadrasana, Warrior Two, five, four, three, two, one, straightening the legs. We take the hand down, we place it wherever you can, maybe close to the knee. If you can go lower, that's okay. So keeping it here, we open the chest. Hands are in line, making one straight line. Both legs are straight. Imagine you're stuck between two walls. Okay, so try not to fall forward. 
straightening up trikonasana triangle pose you should feel the stretch in the front leg if it's too much on the knees bend the knees slightly holding for five four three two one hands come up straight from here we turn forward coming on to the toes of the back leg bending the front leg try to keep the back leg straight hips are facing forward try to scoop the tailbone in inhale join the palms raise both the hands up Virabhadrasana one warrior one okay looking straight ahead if you can you can pull the hands behind the ears slide back bend three two one from here we straighten the legs come back straight this time we bring both toes towards each other hands are straight holding here and then we place hands on our hips both heels are in line both toes are facing forward and from here we start to straighten the back tilt the pelvic so with your hands you can try to tilt your hips so chest comes forward without rounding the back look forward and slowly bring the hands down wherever your hands come down if they can't come down you can bend the knees slightly you can place your hands on your thighs if you can bring your hands down straight in the knees and maybe head comes down okay again depends on your flexibility if you feel very flexible you can widen the legs a little bit more and maybe bring the head all the way down up to you okay so either you are here or you are here or you are completely down from here to come out of this posture we straighten the hands look ahead first bend the knees slightly bring the hands onto the thighs raise the chest up back up straight body straight legs from here we turn towards the right coming on to the toes and we straighten both the hands up here we need to find our balance so both feet need to be going into the mat belly in back leg straight stretching the hand out warrior one virabhadrasana one and then from here coming into virabhadrasana or warrior two so left leg toes go this way right leg toes go this way both heels are in line first try to adjust yourself here hips look this way knees go away if you feel too much pain in the knees straighten the knees if not sit the hips lower hands are straight look towards your right hand hold here and then straighten big inhale and exhale sit the hips lower every inhale we go away from gravity we pull ourselves up we fill ourselves with energy and every exhale we go a little bit deeper towards gravity relaxing our shoulders relaxing our hips one more time inhale this time we bring the right hand down create a straight line between both hands push with this right hand so you can straighten your body feeling the stretch in the right leg trikonasana or triangle pose either you can look up at the ceiling or you can look forward or you can look down whichever one brings you balance and then we straighten both hands bend the knee from here we bring the toes towards each other hands are straight bringing the hands onto the waist we go back into wide angle forward fold so bringing the hands down maybe you stay here today or you can bend the knees place your hands on your thighs if you're very uncomfortable here if you feel too much stretch or if you have it in you you can bring your head all the way down up to you we hold here for five, five counts five four three two one slowly we look forward first we bend the knees we bring the hands onto the thighs we bring the chest up face up and then 
we straighten okay bring the legs a little bit closer if that brings you more stability and we come to this side of the mat joining both feet again tadasana mountain pose remember pick your toes up feet go down slightly pulling your legs up belly in back straight rolling the shoulders back hands face forward placing this time left hand on belly right hand on chest three rounds of abdominal breathing or pranayama inhale fill the belly up with air exhale remove all the air from the belly inhale and exhale one more time inhale and exhale okay slowly we release both hands we open our eyes we raise both hands up palms are facing each other and we sit the hips lower like we did on the other side be careful of the tailbone try to tuck the tailbone in belly in hands come close to your ears sit the bit, hips a bit lower a bit lower a bit lower relax the chest down grab the thighs release your head down maybe hips go all the way up and then from here we sit the hips a little bit down placing the hands down just fingertips if you can't reach come up onto your toes and if you can sit the hips on your toes and relax to sit down into seated pose okay keeping the knees bent we round the spine support with your hands round the spine we go all the way down from here we bend the knees we slightly touch our fingertips with the heels we take a moment to roll the shoulders back just relax yourself here bending the knees we grab the th the legs okay so into pavan muktasana and you can just go side to side so massaging your spine they should feel amazing if you have lower back pain or if you're working on the laptop all day take a moment to just think about the practice that we did today so relaxing the knees down again a uh, feet down we started with centering ourselves then we warmed up all our limbs our shoulders our legs our neck we did a few postures or asanas so Virabhadrasana 1, Virabhadrasana 2, Trikonasana, we did standing posture, so mountain pose, Tadasana, we focused on Pranayama which is breath work, abdominal breathing and now we are going to come into some relaxing postures, so with the fingertips we touch the heels, we roll the shoulders back scooping the tailbone in raising the hips up first so bridge pose okay from here make a make sure you focus on your feet so try to see that the knees are not going away this way try to squeeze the thighs together without touching the feet squeeze the glutes so you can raise up higher maybe your shoulders can walk towards each other interlocking the fingers if this is not possible just stay here and slowly to come out we bring upper back down first rounding the spine then lower back then middle back okay one more time inhale raise the hip up into bridge pose again squeezing thighs together using your glutes to raise up again this is very good for the spine for the back for the shoulders we hold here for five four three two one slowly upper back comes down middle back lower back and we relax 
Okay, from here we bring the thighs towards us. We raise the legs up to face the sky. Okay, happy baby Ananda Balasana. We grab the toes from inside the legs. If you cannot grab the toes, just grab the ankles. If you're able to reach your toes from inside of your thighs, try to get them to face the feet facing the ceiling and pull them down. So as if your thighs want to reach the ground. Be careful that your head is not coming up and you're not stretching the shoulders. Shoulders are relaxed. If you find that you are too stretched, you can grab the ankles. Okay, once you're here, in Ananda Balasana or Happy Baby so funny pose, we just move side to side. This pose is very good to massage your belly, to improve your digestion, massage your spine. And from here, we relax, we bring the legs together, we straighten the legs. So we want to come into 90 degrees just as how we started. This can be sometimes difficult because you need to use your core, you need to have strong legs. So if it's too much, you can just bend the knees, grab them, take a moment, and then go back up. Okay, we're going to hold for 10 counts. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one and now we're going to slowly bring the toes down again using the core try to keep the shoulders down 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 and relax <sighs> so you can take a deep breath and here we go into one of the other most important yoga poses. Maybe you have already heard of this one, which is called Shavasana or final resting pose. It looks very nice and easy, but actually it's quite difficult because you need to completely let go. So we start to just firstly relax the body. However, the legs want to fall, placing the hands so that palms face the sky. Start to roll the shoulders back so they are completely flat on the ground. And now start by observing the space between your eyebrows. Relax if you have any tension created in this space. Relax your jaws. Relax your shoulders. Try to observe how your hands and wrists feel today. Relax your chest. Relax your hips, make them completely heavy. Relaxing the thighs, the knees, the feet. Letting your feet fall however they want to. Complete body is so heavy. And now we let go of everything that we felt during this practice, whether it was a great feeling or a negative feeling, we just let go. And from the physical practice or asana, we come back to pranayama or breath work. So placing right hand on belly, we go back to abdominal breathing so every inhale, we pull the belly up to fill it with air. Every exhale, we release all the air from the belly. Again, inhale, raising the belly up to fill it with air. And exhale removing all the air from the belly. One more round, inhale, filling the belly up. And exhale, removing the air from the belly. 
coming back to normal breathing. We just let the hand fall back into its place. We move away from our senses, pratyahara, to go inwards. To focus and concentrate dharana on the point between our eyebrows. Just keep your focus there. Imagining a light. Imagining your eyes going towards this one point between your eyebrows. And one minute of silent meditation or dhyana. Just staying focused on this point and trying to remove any thoughts from coming into your head by always bringing your attention back to the point between your eyebrows. Okay, from here slowly we move our toes, we move our fingers, we raise the hands above the head, opposite side of the feet, we bend the knees towards one and one leg and rolling ourselves to any one side of your choice, you can just stay here in fetal position. For a few moments, no rush. And then when you're ready, you push yourself up with one hand, coming back into seated position of your choice, using a pillow, pushing the lower body into the mat, pulling your belly towards the spine, bone by bone, raising the head up, rolling the shoulder back, Placing the hands on the knees, joining the palms towards your heart, taking a moment to thank yourself for taking this time for your yoga practice and telling yourself that you have it in you to work on your body, to work on your mind and to find inner peace through yoga. Okay, slowly we rub the palms together, relax the spine, we place the hands on our eyes and gently we open our eyes. Thank you very much for this class. So I'm hopeful that after this class you feel the benefits already of yoga. You feel that you are ready to continue yoga practice. Maybe it gives you the courage to go to a studio near your place or you can continue with YouTube videos on my channel. Okay, the most important is that you need to know that your yoga practice is your practice. There is no level in yoga. There is no a flexibility goal that you need to reach or strength goal this is about you taking time for yourself and you taking the moment to observe your body scan it work on your breathing work on your concentration work on meditation 
and feel the overall benefits of this amazing wisdom and practice. Okay, sometimes when you will go to class or you will do other videos, you will find that there will be postures that are new to you. So it takes some time for your mind to understand. Everybody feels uncomfortable in the postures in the beginning, but slowly you start to get comfortable with them. At the same time, always be mindful of pain when it is becoming bad pain. So protect your knees, protect your wrists, protect your neck. Okay, and there are always ways to do the posture differently so that it works for you. So take the right guidance by going to the right teacher, watching the right videos, doing the right research. Use props, use pillows, use things under your knees. Okay and have a safe practice thank you very much and stay healthy